Hello and welcome back. For this video we're going to talk about literal equations that involve factoring. Okay, with this problem we're still going to solve for x, which means we have to get all the x's on one side. But the problem with that is, as you'll see, when I subtract a bx from both sides, I have an ax minus bx is equal to c. So I got everything that doesn't have an x on the other side. But I have x's in two different locations, and neither of these are common or like terms. So I can't just combine them together. I can't subtract them. So what we're going to use is the technique called factoring. Now factoring is a way of thinking it as undistributing. Okay, so if you distribute, you are multiplying. So if you're undistributing, which means you are factoring, then you are dividing. So if you look at this in the middle here, you can see that they have two things in common. They both have an x in common. So what we're going to do is factor an x out or divide an x out of both of them. Now, when I say divide them out, I'm going to bring them outside parentheses. So I'm bringing them out as an x. So ax divided by x leaves me with an a, bring down the minus. A bx divided by x leaves me with a b, and that whole thing's equal to c. And if you're not sure if you did that right or not, go ahead and distribute this x back out to both of these and see if you get the original problem back. And if you do, you did it right. But the difference is, instead of having x in one, two different locations, you have x in a single location. So x is multiplying with that entire expression of a minus b. So to undo that, you're going to divide by a minus b. And on the other side, you're going to divide by a minus b. And of course, this first one right here, a minus b over a minus b comes out to 1. And 1 times x is just x. And on the other side, I have a c over a minus b, and there's nothing else I can do to reduce that. So that's my final result using factoring. In this case, I'm solving for p. Well, right now, everything that doesn't have the variable p in it is on the other side. So I got to look at these two and go, OK, they're not like terms, but they have a p in common. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start with my parentheses around it and factor a p out of that. And I like to show this example here because a lot of students uh, forget that when you divide a p out of this problem right here, p divided by p, you put a p on the outside, leaves you with a 1 plus, And when you divide a p out of this one right here, you're left with an r t. So divide a p or factor a p out of p plus p r t, and you're left with 1 plus r t. Well, the p is multiplying with the entire 1 plus r t. So to undo that, you're going to divide by 1 plus r t. And you can do that on the other side as well, 1 plus r t. The 1 plus r t cancels out to a 1. 1 times p is just p. And I cannot simplify this anymore, so I'm just going to leave it as a over 1 plus r t. And that's our final, final answer. All right, for this example here, we do have fractions. And one of the things we're going to pull from our multi-step process is to simplify by clearing the fractions. So I'm going to multiply both sides by a b d, which is the least common multiple or the common denominator for both of those fractions. So multiplying by b and d will give me the common denominator. So when I multiply b d, I'm going to show this in the long form, b d times a x all over b plus, and I'm going to multiply here, of course, b d times c x all over d. And on the other side, I have simply uh, b d times e. When I do that, the b value cancels here, the d value cancels here, leaving d a x plus b c x equal to b d e. So all I did was multiply by the least common denominator, which happens to be b times d, or b d. Now at this point, I've gotten rid of my fractions. And I can see that these two expressions, which aren't the same, they're not like terms, but they do have an x in common, which means I can factor an x out of them. So we're going to put parentheses around here and bring an x on the outside. And what's left over is a da plus a bc. And that's still equal to a b d e. And the x is multiplying with that expression. So all I got to do to undo it is divide by a da plus b c and do the same thing on the other side a da plus bc. And the da plus bc cancels on this side, leaving x by itself equal to bde. And that's all over da plus bc. Solve for x. 
Now in this problem we have two situations in which we have an x on opposite sides, but not only that, but we have a parentheses of which our x is in and a 2q on the outside. So what I'm going to do first is go ahead and distribute that 2q. So bring down the 3px and that's going to give me 2qr minus, and the 2 times the 5 is going to give me a 10, and qx is just coming along. So that's going to be a minus 10qx. The next thing to do is get all the x's on one side because I want x by itself. That is what we are asking to solve for. So what I'm going to do is take the 10q or negative 10qx off this side and move it to the other side. So I'm going to move it to the other side as a plus. So I'm going to bump this over and call this 3px and I'm bringing this over to the other side as a plus 10qx. Remember anytime you bring a term across the magical barrier here it changes signs and I still have a 2 qr on the right hand side. So all I did was add 10qx to both sides. Now that I have all my x's on one side I can see that this expression has a x in common so I'm going to factor out an x. So I'm going to bring an x outside and leave a 3p plus 10q left over inside still equal to 2qr. Now the x is multiplying with the 3p plus 10q so to undo that I'm going to divide by 3p plus 10q and on the other side I'm going to divide by 3p plus 10q and this is going to cancel out leaving just x equal to and on the other side I have a 2qr and that whole expression is going to be over the expression of 3p plus 10q. Okay we have another example where we do not have uh, like denominators, so we have to get like denominators or clear them out. So the uh, denominators are m, n, and p. So if I just times those all together, that would be my least common multiple. So I'm going to multiply both sides by m, n, p, m, n, and p. And when I distribute here, the first one, the m's are going to cancel out but I still have an NP up there with an X. So I have an NP and an X on my first one, but there's no more M minus when I distribute to the next one, the N will cancel out with the N, leaving me an MP and an X. Bring down my equal sign. When I distribute over here, the P is going to cancel with the numerator. Remember, this is all over one. Going to cancel with this P, leaving an M in, in the numerator. So I know, have no more fractions, so I've simplified the problem. And conveniently enough, my x's are all on one side. And you can see that these two expressions, or these two terms, have a x in common. So I'm going to factor an x out of them. So bring an x outside, and what's left over is np minus mp. And that's still going to equal mn. And to get the uh, np minus M -M mp off of the uh, left hand side we're going to divide by np minus mp and we're going to do it again on the other side divide by np minus mp and this left hand side these two cancel each other out to a 1, 1 times x is just x and on the right hand side I can't do any more simplifying so I have an mn over np minus mp